Hi there. Welcome to this video tutorial on the quotient rule for differentiation. Now the quotient rule is a method that we use for differentiating fractions where in the numerator we've got a function of x and in the denominator we've got a function of x. Now in the past you might have had this type of question and never known about the quotient rule for differentiation because for something like this you would have handled it by just dividing each of the top two terms by the x. 2x squared divided by x would have given us 2x and plus 5 divided by x is 5 over x or simply 5x to the power minus 1. And so to differentiate this we'd have dy by dx equals 2 and then for this term it would have been minus 5x to the power minus 2 which would be the same as 5 over x squared. And you could have possibly left it like that or you might have simplified it further by putting it all over a common denominator of say x squared. And that would mean that this 2 would have to be multiplied by x squared and this would just be left as minus 5. So you'd have got this simplified version for dy by dx. Now as I said earlier, that's all very well for differentiating something like this where you had your single term in the denominator and you could divide it into each of the terms on the top. But what happens if you had, say, something like this. Say y equals 2x squared plus 5 over 3x minus 2. We've got two terms in the denominator now and we can't really do the same kind of division very easily as we did here. It just becomes impractical anyway to do it. And for this one here, y equals 3e e to the power 2x all over the natural log of x, well, there's just no way that I'm going to divide this into this as such. So we've got to come up with a different way of being able to differentiate things like this. And that's why we have what is called the quotient rule. Now the quotient rule is where we have essentially y equaling say two functions of x being divided by one another and we'll call those functions of x u and v so we've got u divided by v so in this example u would be 2x squared plus 5 and v would be the x and it can be shown that dy by dx is equal to the bottom of the fraction, v, multiplied by the differential of the top of the fraction with respect to x, so that would be du by dx, and then minus, and then we do it the other way around, in as much as we do the top of the fraction multiplied by the differential of the bottom of the fraction with respect to x, so that's dv by dx. And we divide all of this by the denominator the bottom of the fraction, in other words, all squared. So this is the quotient rule, which I'm just showing you without any proof. All I want to do in this video is just show you how we can go about using it. Now, it's not a simple case then of just when we get fractions, just differentiating the top and dividing it by the differential of the bottom because if that were the case for something like this if I differentiated the top I would get 4x differentiate the bottom I'd get 1 4x divided by 1 is 4x and you can see it isn't giving us this result now what I'd like to do is just to verify that this rule works for this example up here We'll copy it down again that we have got y equals 2x squared plus 5 all over x. So dy dx then, let's just put it in here, therefore dy dx, what's it going to be equal to? Well, we take 
v, the bottom of the fraction, first of all, so that's x. We'll put that in brackets. Good idea to put each of your parts in brackets. And we multiply it by the differential of the top of the fraction, du dx. So if we differentiate the top of the fraction, differential of 2x squared is 4x, and the differential of 5 is 0. Now we need to do minus u times dv dx. So in other words, the top of the fraction times the differential of the bottom of the fraction. So we've got the top of the fraction, 2x squared plus 5, and we multiply this by the differential of the bottom of the fraction, which is going to be just simply 1. And then we divide all of this by v squared, the bottom of the fraction squared. So in other words, this is going to be x squared. So all I need to do now is just tidy this up. So x times 4x is going to be 4x squared. Then we've got minus the 1 times everything in the bracket here. So that's going to be minus 2x squared minus 5. And that's all divided by x squared. And 4x squared minus 2x squared gives us 2x squared. And then we've got minus 5, and all of this is divided by x squared. So you can see it gives us exactly the same result. So it does work. But I think this is a little over the top, this method for doing something like this. But it can be done nonetheless, OK? But where this method comes into its own is in questions like these two here. OK, so I'll just move it over. And what we'll do is we'll try these two examples. Or in fact, you might like to pause the video and have a go at these yourself. If that's the case, I'll just give you a moment to do that. When you're done, do come back and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So let's take this first one here. If we're going to differentiate this, OK, it follows then that dy by dx would equal, well, according to the formula then, we take the bottom of the fraction and multiply it by the differential of the top of the fraction. So we'll take the bottom of the fraction, which is 3x minus 2, put that in brackets, and multiply it now by the differential of the top of the fraction, which is going to be 4x plus 0, just simply then 4x. Then we subtract, and we do it the other way around. That is, we take the top of the fraction and multiply it by the differential of the bottom of the fraction. So the top of the fraction then is 2x squared plus 5. And we now multiply it by the differential of the bottom of the fraction. So it's just going to be 3. And we put all of this over the denominator of the fraction squared. So that's going to be all of 3x minus 2 all squared. So it's just a question of tidying this up. And in this one, if I was to multiply the bracket out, 4x times 3x minus 2, I'm going to get 12x squared minus 8x. And then with this one, I've got minus 3 multiplied by 2x squared plus 5. So minus 3 times the 2x squared is going to give me minus 6x squared. And minus 3 times the plus 5 is minus 15. And that's all divided then by 3x minus 2 all squared. Never expand out the denominator in these kind of questions, OK? And by the way, it's very tempting. I see this mistake made many times over where people cancel, say, that 3x minus 2 with the 1 down here. You can't do that because 3x minus 2 is not a common factor. It's not in both of these terms, OK? So never make that mistake of trying to cancel your value here with the one off here. OK, well, 
just tidying this up further, what we've got is that this equals, well, we've got 12x squared minus 6x squared, which is just 6x squared. Then we've got minus 8x minus the 15, and this is all divided then by 3x minus 2, all squared. And sometimes your quadratic expression on the top here might factorise. This one doesn't, but if it did, do try and factorise it. OK? Right, well, I picked this one purely because it's got other types of functions, an exponential function in and a natural log function in, but there's more to this as well. More in the kind of simplification. So if you haven't had a go at this and you still want to have a go, just give you a moment to pause the video and then do come back and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go at this one. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with differentiating exponential functions and natural log functions. So it follows from this that if we're going to do dy dx, OK, it's going to be equal then to v du dx, first of all, the bottom times differential of the top. So the bottom of the fraction is natural log of x, so just write that in brackets, natural log of x. And then we multiply this by the differential of 3e e to the 2x. And the differential of 3e e to the 2x is going to be 6e e to the 2x. Okay, 6e e to the 2x. If you're unsure about that, do check out my video on differentiating exponential functions by the chain rule. Okay, so that's v du dx. Now we have to do minus, and it's u dv dx. In other words, top of the fraction times the differential of the bottom of the fraction. So you've got 3e to the 2x multiplied by the differential of natural log of x, which is 1 over x. Okay, so 1 over x there. And all of this is divided then by the bottom of the fraction, all squared. So we've got natural log of x, all squared. So natural log of x, put that in brackets, and then we'll have the 2 out there. Okay? Now, as I said earlier, the reason why I picked this one was because it's the simplification as well that uh, is important. What we've got here is this x floating around in this fraction here. And the best thing I can do to clean this up is to essentially multiply top and bottom by x. Multiplying top and bottom of a fraction by the same value is like multiplying by 1. So it's not going to change the value of the fraction, just the look of it. So I've got two terms on the top here being multiplied by this x. And so if we take the first term, we're going to have 6 times x, 6x. X. OK, it's best to put the number first of all. 6x, then the exponential function next, e to the power 2x, multiplied by the natural log of x. OK, and we don't need brackets anymore. It's not an ambiguous statement. Taking this term and multiplying this term by the x, this x will cancel out with the x, just leaving me with a 1. So what we're going to have is minus 3e to the power 2x. And this is all divided by, and here we've got x times the natural log of x, all squared. So just write that in as x times the natural log of x, all squared. Now I could leave it like that, or I could take it further and factorise it. I can see that of these two terms on the top, I've got a common factor of 3, goes into the 6. And I've also got e to the power 2x in both terms, so we'll put 3e to the power 2x there. And then we'll have an open bracket, and inside I need a 2 to bring that up to a 6. I need another x. And I also need the natural log of x. So we've got 2x natural log of x. 
and then for this term it's just minus 1. Okay, and it's now all divided by x times the natural log of x all squared. Well, I hope that's given you some idea on how we can go about using then the quotient rule. And there's plenty of examples out there. This is only just the beginning. We could have ones where we've got trigonometric functions in, for instance, like say 3e e to the power 2x all divided by sine x. It will be handled in much the same kind of way, but you've just got to be familiar with your differentiation of trigonometric functions. So, as I say, I hope this has given you a start then on how to go about using the quotient rule for problems like these.